Hello everybody, I uh, hope you're all well, hope you've all had a good week. Uh, I've had a belter. I've been learning more about the joys of printing your photos at home. And if you can't tell, yes, I'm, I'm being sarcastic. This is a product that I didn't know existed up until a couple of days ago. It's called a maintenance cartridge. And uh, basically, my, uh, my Canon Pro 1000 which is a fantastic printer, I've had it a few months now, love it. But it spat out a, a warning message that my maintenance cartridge was full. And what I took that to mean was basically the really expensive ink that I've put in the printer, can't use it all, and it just chucks it into a maintenance cartridge out the back, which you then have to empty, tipping away all your really expensive ink. I was wrong though. Turns out you can't empty that cartridge and just stick it back in the back of the printer. You have to buy a new one every time it fills up. So this is a bit of plastic that I've had to buy whose only purpose is to catch all the really expensive ink that uh, your printer has decided it can't use. And then when this fills up, I'll need to buy another new one and just throw this in the bin with all that ink in it. Worst thing I've ever had to buy that. Rubbish. Anyway, sorry, I didn't mean to start with, with that negativity. I, uh, I think lockdown's getting to me. I've started trying to do lots more exercise and have cold showers because I've heard that that can be quite a good mood regulator and I think it does help, but I'm, I am feeling a bit tetchy at the moment. But aside from that, I did have fun printing this week because Photo Speed uh, very kindly sent me a load of new paper to test, which I've not done for years. I typically stick to what I know with paper, uh, but I've been testing these and having a lot of fun doing it before I... Um, before I saw that message on my printer. And speaking of testing these, I've been obviously doing quite a bit of printing, which you need to do when you're testing paper. And uh, I mean, I have no cause for seven different versions of this particular photo. So I'll do a giveaway of these. I'll, I'll talk about that in a bit. But um, yeah, that was quite fun. Anyway, this video is actually about photos like that. Photos that I think are just the jackpot in photography because you'd forgotten about them or didn't even realize they existed somewhere in your hard drives. Finding photos that you didn't know existed or that you'd forgotten about, I think is kind of like wearing an old jacket that you've not worn for ages and just finding cash in it. It's the only thing I think that gives a, a similar feeling. It's amazing. Anyway, I was speaking about this a couple of weeks ago on Instagram and how I've just got hard drives everywhere full of photos. So I've got SSDs and old traditional big hard drives. I mean, I can see seven hard drives now. Are they all connected to my computer? That is, you know what hard drives look like. I don't need to show you anymore. But I had a few comments and DMs uh, from people asking how I organise my photos in such a way that enables me to go through and look at them simply. Uh, so I thought I'd talk about that today because I do think it can lead to, again, what I consider to be the photography jackpot. So like every single photographer in the world, when I get home from taking photos, I take my card out of my camera, put it in my computer, and unlike a lot of photographers, I import everything. Now, I don't import all the files that I've got into Lightroom uh, because as a YouTube creator, I also have a lot of video footage as well, but every single photo that I've taken goes into Lightroom. Uh, so a couple of other things to talk about on import. Um, a lot of people have asked me if I apply presets and lens corrections on import, uh, and I don't do either of those things. Now, I don't apply presets because I don't know which presets are gonna work for which images. That one's fairly straightforward. And I used to apply lens corrections on import, but I found it used to, I don't know if it still does, but it used to really slow down the import. Uh, and when you're importing hundreds of photos, as I often do, you don't want that to take ages, particularly if you wanna to go to bed after a long day shooting. You just want your import to be done as fast as possible. And uh, what I do instead is I apply lens corrections by default and I have that set for all my presets. So basically, as soon as I start editing a photo, lens corrections get applied then rather than to every single image, which is important, or it used to be, like I said, I don't know if uh, lens corrections still slow down an import, but I take on average, as you can see here, for the last four years, I've taken probably over 20,000 photos a year. But if we call it 20,000 photos a year, if you just talk amongst yourselves, bear with me a minute. That works out at 365, 
55 photos a day. Now, given that I don't take photos every day, typically when I'm importing images into Lightroom, I'm doing so with hundreds of images at a time. And this is the main reason that I don't throw away any photos, that I import everything. Because when you're importing hundreds of photos at a time, and you're having to go through and make selects on which photos you want to import and which ones you don't, it's possible to make mistakes. It's possible to import something or choose something that's not completely in focus, not as much as another version. It's possible to miss good photos. I just don't want to take that chance. So I keep everything. And what that means is that I can make decisions on which are the best photos later when I'm editing and I can take my time much more than I'm likely to when I'm just trying to import the photos in the first place. I've never liked the process of making selects because I always think I'm going to miss something and I'd much prefer to just get it all and then I can work out which is the best photo later when uh, it comes to editing and I'm back home or wherever it might be. So as I say, I've got loads of hard drives kind of scattered around my desk, loads around my house and loads of other places as well. Uh, the main hard drive that I'm using though is a G drive. I think this is a 10 terabyte one and I've got one at my house and one that's not at my house in case my house burns down. But I make sure that every month or so, this one gets copied over to the other one and therefore I've got a backup offsite that's not at my house. I also use four, I wanna say, cloud services, uh, iCloud, G Drive, Amazon, I'm sure there's another one, Adobe. But I don't save 20,000 images a year to those services, as you probably won't be shocked to hear, because that would cost a fortune and take ages. Can you imagine how long that would take to upload that many photos? So no, I don't do that. I just have my best ones on those cloud services. So let me show you that process now. So on this G Drive, as you can see, I have a folder named Images by year, and shockingly, within that folder, there are year folders. Who knew? So if we go into 2018, you can see that I've got a folder for each individual month. And then if we drill down into one of the months, let's say September, you can see that I've got a folder for each of the dates. Now I don't do this anymore. I used to do it because quite often I'd have uh, projects that were only taking a day. So maybe on the 17th, I would be shooting for myself. On the 18th, I'd be shooting for a client. On the 19th, I'd be shooting for myself again. And on the 20th, I'd be shooting for another client. And I could organize quite neatly uh, by day the photos that I was taking. I don't really do that anymore. Uh, often I'll go on longer trips or I'm just shooting for myself more or I'm shooting projects that take more than a day. So it doesn't really make much sense to organize by date anymore. What I do do is if I'm going on a trip uh, that spans two months, let's say I'm going somewhere in the last week of January, coming back in the first week of February, all the images from that trip will end up in the folder that was the month of departure. So in that case, January. And that just means that I have all those project images kept together. And that was quite difficult to do when I was keeping hold of exact dates. So I just don't do that anymore. So storing images just by month, I think for me and my photography works quite well because when I've got some downtime, like, I don't know, the last three months, I, I can go through these folders one month at a time and just see if anything catches my eye that didn't prior when I was editing these images originally, uh, or see if my tastes have changed and I like a photo that I didn't previously like, which has happened quite a lot as well. Now, I did that for September 2018, a couple of weeks ago, and I found some photos that I like that I didn't even know existed or I completely forgot about as I mentioned. So these are those images. There's, I don't know, about 15 photos here uh, that I'd forgotten about. And I really like them. And I've been using one of them, as you've just seen, for the, um, the test prints. So when I find images like this, uh, old images, or when I'm just initially editing them, when I find images that I really, really like, that's the time that I want to spread them across the cloud services and across my hard drives. And to do that, I use this best folder up here that you might be able to see. Now, let's say that I've got this image here that I really like and I want to keep a copy of this in the most places possible. Then what I'll do is I'll export it into this best folder. Now this best folder is organized as follows. So you can see it's split into DNGs and JPEGs. And if I click down into JPEGs, it'll be the same for DNGs, but that's then split into year. So I can go into any year and I can get a roundup of my best photos of that year, either in JPEGs or in DNGs. And these are the folders that I keep in the cloud. So I can have access, easy access across the internet to any of my best images at any time. 
Uh, so yeah, that's how I do that. Also, I have these images copied over into collections on Lightroom so that I can get access to them easily uh, on my phone in the Lightroom app. So you can see best 18, best 19, best 20. Haven't got a best 21 yet. Uh, not really taken any photos yet, so. Uh, so yeah, that is how I import and organize my photos. Not the most complex system in the world, but seems to work for me and hopefully you've, you've taken something from that as well. Speaking of importing, uh, a big thank you to this week's video sponsor, Lexar and their 2000X SD card. So this is a UHS-2 V90 rated card, which basically means I can throw all my 4K footage at it and it won't even break into a sweat. Uh, it's got 300 megabytes a second read speeds, 260 megabytes a second write speeds, and it's available in capacities up to 128 gigabytes. So the next time you're in the market for a high capacity, high speed SD card, then I'd really recommend checking out this Lexar 2000X. I've been very impressed with it and big thank you to them for, uh, for their support of this channel. Much appreciated. By the way, look how battered my G9 is now. It's about three years old. I love cameras when they get like this, when they're full of scratches and they've got bits of glue holding them together. Whenever I see cameras like this, I think that camera has probably been pointed at some quite interesting stuff. And luckily for me, it has. Got a high shut account, mind, nowadays. It's kind of like shoes, isn't it? In the shop, they all look the same, but uh, once you see shoes that have been worn quite a bit, you think, they've probably been to some, some quite interesting places. I mean, not at the moment, but uh, ordinarily. Um, oh yeah, print giveaway. So, if you would like, if you would like one of these prints, because I don't need all of them, um, please let me know in the comments. Just say something like, I would like a print, and uh, I'll enter you randomly. Don't tell me which country you live in, in the comment, because uh, I'll end up just selecting British ones, because I'm quite stingy, and I don't want to post internationally. But I will do, just don't tell me yeah, where you live. And then a few days after this video has gone live, I'll just randomly select a few comments, and uh, I'll find a way to get in touch with you, and organize shipping. But uh, yeah, if you get one, you'll notice that I've written the, the name of the paper on the back of it because I, I needed to know the name of the paper so that I could compare them. So there we go. If you've watched this long on what is probably quite a boring topic, I appreciate it and you, you probably deserve a print. And to be fair, there are probably only six of you still watching. So yeah, hopefully you'll get one. Anyway, I think I've covered pretty much everything on uh, my file organization. I hope that was helpful. And uh, if you've got any other questions, do let me know and I'll do my best to get to them in the comments. Um, I was about to say again, next time hopefully we'll be outside, but I'm gonna stop saying that for a little while. It's just pointless. <laughs>